James 1, 22. Chapter 1, verse 22. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Wow, praise God. James is telling us to do what the Bible says. Do what God says. Do what Jesus says in his word and not only be hearers. That's that's strange, right? Because you think that if you're if you're Christian, if you're reading the word and you're understanding the word, you must be a Christian, right? If you're in the Bible constantly, unless you're just a historian or something, um, you should know God and you should be, while you're reading his word, you know, if you know God, you know his precepts, you know he wants to be obeyed, he demands to be obeyed, he commands to be obeyed, so shouldn't you be obeying him? But here James is saying, don't, don't be hearers only. Because if you listen and don't do, you are deceiving yourself. How are we deceiving ourselves? We're deceiving ourselves that we are right with God. We're deceiving ourselves, maybe that we're even saved. And we're deceiving ourselves that it is profitable in any way, shape, or form. Breaking this down in its most simplistic tenets, in its most simplistic um, virtues of faith and obedience, right? There it is, right there. You have to believe, and then you have to obey. See, even, even in the Bible it says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Do what God says. Now, do I claim to be the doer of all doers? Um, I I obey God, and I do everything he says, and I don't fall short. Well, the, James also tells us, and, and there's other scriptures as well, that tell us that if, if we say, John especially, if we say that we, we don't sin, then we don't have God. We don't know God. Because we're a liar if we say that we don't sin. And sin is falling short. And falling short is not obeying God. So we all disobey God at one point or another in our lives every day. Some of us more than others, but nobody's judging us or counting besides besides God. Okay? And that's not that's not to say that God's up there waiting for you to sin so that he can mark in his in his little you know tally, oh sin today, sin today, sin today. He, Jesus died on the cross for that sin. Amen. What God wants is a relationship with us. He wants us to repent of our daily sin. That's why we have the Lord's Prayer to help us with that template of always asking God to forgive us, whether we're saved, okay, and sanctified to a certain extent, or we're, whether we're still uh you know not mature. God wants us to repent daily. Amen. But this this obeying, this obeying, it has to increase in our walk, in our spiritual walk. As we walk in the Spirit and put the flesh under the feet of Jesus, under the control of the Spirit, we put the flesh under the control of the Spirit, we should be maturing and growing daily in Christ and obeying Him more and more. Now here is a little lesson for those of us who have been in the Lord for some time and those of us in the clergy who are ministers of the Lord in regards to being in the church, having positions in the church, pastors, bishops, ministers, um, preachers, teachers, even you Sunday school teachers. It's very, very easy to teach the word and not do it. I want to say that again because you may not believe that but I'm, I'm not only talking out of experience, I'm talking out of knowledge that God has given us through his word right here. You deceive yourself. You deceive yourself if you're not obeying. If you're only listening, you're deceiving yourself. But I have. I have taught the word of God and then fallen short on the very subject that I've teached on. As a matter of fact, I learned, uh, I guess... Close to halfway around my ministry, well, you know, once, once I had a position in the church, I started learning, you know what? I need to start preaching on the things I struggle with. When God, when, when God pricks my heart and God shows me my sin and God shows me what I need to really focus on that I'm not focusing on, that's what I need to study and that's what I need to improve myself on and then share with others. That's how I 
let the Spirit guide me in sermons. If I'm teaching you a sermon, it's because I'm dealing with the topic. I'm dealing with it. And so that just shows you, um, you know, the fragility of every human soul. Because we have to put this flesh under the control of the Spirit of God. And it's not easy. And so it's very easy for us as ministers, as teachers and preachers, it is easy for us to teach it and not live it. We think we're living it, but we're not. We've deceived ourselves. Just because you're teaching it doesn't mean you're living it. You've really got to study to show yourself approved. And you're going to find that as you're teaching it, <coughs> excuse me, the Lord more and more convicts you. Pay attention to what you're teaching. It's for you. It's for you. It's for you. We don't consider ourselves that Pharisee, right, that comes to the altar and says, I'm glad I don't sin like this tax collector over here. That's not us. We are that tax collector. Even though we're saved, even though we're children of God, we still have a fleshly nature that needs to be repented of daily. And when we fall short, and we do, my prayer for myself and for you is that we are aware of it, more cognizant of it as we grow in grace, and that we are able to repent quicker, immediately, and and turn around and start getting in alignment with God's Word. Be doers of the Word, not hearers only. Don't deceive yourself. If you're living a life of teaching and preaching, or you're living a life that you think you're saved, and you're not obeying God, you need to evaluate your salvation. Are you saved? Really? I mean, if you just disregard everything and don't have any remorse for anything that you do and not checking your actions and your heart against the word of God, how can you know you're saved? You know that you're saved by several different things the Bible says. Study to show yourself that. How do I know I'm saved? One of the ways you know you're saved is that you grow in obedience throughout your walk with God. Are you growing in obedience? Are you a doer of the word more and more every day? God bless you till next time.